On square B7, fly control platform, there's a submarine that we could have gone to before, but we need the bow in order to complete the battle that's going to take place in there. So let's press this switch, and wouldn't you know it, whiz robes! Actually, only one for now, so let's just kill this one with the sword. And then, another whiz robe appears, but this time, there's some help. Of course, that help is just a bunch of choo-choos, but um, I'm just gonna kill a few of them, and uh, oh shit, <laughs> I almost got burned there. So yeah, you just want to be careful, because sometimes you're not gonna know exactly where those fi- Like that! Just like that, so now it's in range, so let's kill it with a jump attack. And now, the hard part begins! Yep, mini blends! Infinite numbers of them! And to make matters worse, there are two whiz robes now! And down goes one, I'm actually doing pretty well! Famous last words, of course! But yeah, what makes this tough is, that, is, is the targeting system! You're gonna try and target the whiz robes, but you're always gonna end up targeting one of the mini blends instead, so... Gotta try and get them out of your way, and when that happens, there are more reinforcements that arrive. So, if I can just get rid of these guys, and maybe this green chew as well. And, oh, I can target it! Yep! Yeah! One hit left, and I'm gonna be good. So, um, where is it? It's behind me, but I can't target it! God damn it, don't know how I didn't get burned there. Okay, it's all the way over there, but I can't target it once again. Freaking mini blends. Come on, die! That chew isn't cooperating either. So just be patient and oh I can target it! I can target it! Here we go! The second whiz robe goes down, so I can now have a path to the treasure, even though you know some of those mini blends are still alive. No, nope, don't touch me! Don't touch me, motherfucker! So, um, our treasure is one of those special charts, uh, that, uh, we can get at various points in the game. Uh, I don't remember which one this is. I think it's the platform chart, though. Am I right? Yep, yeah, it's the platform chart. Uh, this, uh, chart marks, uh, the raised platforms that you can find at sea every now and then. You know which ones I'm talking about. We took off uh, all of the cannons on a bunch of them. So just be careful on the way out because mini blends keep spawning. And here we go, we're done with this place! On square A6, Seven Star Isles, there are some of these platforms that I was just talking about. Um, I think I visited them off screen, so I already obtained the treasure um, for doing... Well, you're about to see what I'm supposed to do on these platforms. Yep! More whiz robes! So, uh, this one can be taken out with the sword, so let's do that. And, uh, you can see the treasure chest that I opened. The, don't, I don't remember what was inside, maybe some rupees or a joy pendant. I honestly don't remember, so... Here we go, second... Oops, sorry, wrong button! I usually map the bow to the X button, but it's on Z this time, so... Didn't, uh, really pay attention, so... Here we go, down goes a second whiz robe, there's a treasure chest that appears over there, but once again, it's not the treasure chest that we came in for. And oh great, they already started appearing, I'm just gonna get a quick shot in here, and we're gonna try to go for the chest without getting burned, and you could see that uh, arrow lodged right into the pillar. So, golden feather, don't really need it, but... Oh well, whatever, at least I have one more, just in case, you know. So, um... Oh shit! <laughs> I didn't see it coming at all. So, down goes one of the whiz robes. And, okay, I can't get it from here. I'm gonna have to go back on the middle platform if I want to get it more reliably, I guess. So... Oh, come on! I was just about to get it and then it teleported. So, one more shot left. EAT THESE FRUIT LOOSE, TOUCAN SAM! And for our troubles, we are going to get a treasure chest, and inside is a treasure chart, number 16, I believe. Well, I know it's number 16 because I looked at my checklist before I started recording, so here we go. Treasure chart number 
16. Now, we still have one more side quest to do before heading to the Forsaken Fortress, so we're gonna get to that right now! Back in the Forest Haven, you want to talk to the Great Deku Tree right here, you can see Makar over there playing the violin, but we're not here for him just yet. We're going to uh, see what the Deku Tree has to say instead, and da -da 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 -da. so of course we're going to get some pointless banter, but uh, I'm going to get right to the point. Remember uh, when I did that side questing tourney? Uh, we saw those Koroks with the withered trees. Well, this is where we do something about it. So, uh, there are two kinds of Koroks. The island Koroks that uh, I just talked about in the forest Koroks. That stayed here on the, uh, in the forest haven. So, yeah, many islands on the Great Sea that have grown dark and dangerous. You don't say. One of your, you know, one of your guys is standing on an island that was completely demolished by Ganondorf. So yeah, we're gonna check on them uh, real quick as soon as uh, we're done here. So uh, as for the island Koroks, or rather the forest Koroks, I mean, uh, there are only two left in the forest haven, which are Makaru, whom we just saw, and Hollow, who's uh, the, the Korok who runs the, the potion shop of the forest haven. He can give you blue potions in exchange for four Boko Baba seeds. We're not going to see him quite yet. I just want to do some more things before doing that. So, let's ask him about the forest water. The forest water is basically, yeah, the secret of the forest haven. It's a mystical water that uh, allows trees to grow tall and mighty in any kind of environment. And, uh, yeah... With such water, it would be even possible possible to return life to a battered, withered tree. So we're going to have to take that forest water to uh, the eight trees that are scattered across the Great Sea. However, we only have 20 minutes to do so, and, be, and, it, and it becomes ordinary water. And we have to do it all in one go, else the trees are going to start withering again. So, let's... Um pop that bottle open, because I'm going to need an empty bottle, of course, to carry the forest water. And, nope. <laughs> this is a bit too shallow here, so I guess, I guess here is going to be good. So yeah, we got some forest water. Now I'm just going to pop the map real quick once the flavor text is done, and I'm going to show you guys that the Deku Tree has marked where all the Koroks are. So we got to go to these eight islands within 20 minutes. And by the way, don't worry. We, we got the help of a little friend I like to call Infinite Water, motherfucker. That's right. You can use that bottle of water as much as you, uh, as much as you want until uh, it becomes ordinary water, at which point there's only one portion. So, uh, I'm gonna head back to the boat real quick. You need the Ballad of Gales! You desperately need it in order to be able to do that in 20 minutes. So, I'll see you on the next island! First, we go to Square B7, Cliff Plateau Isles. This is the longest and trickiest of the... of the trees to reach, because if you remember the first time we went through here, we went through a cave, and although we, uh... Well, I wouldn't say solve the puzzles within the cave because there really aren't that many puzzles, though I guess uh, uh, burning away the, the wooden planks blocking the exit sort of do count, I suppose. So what we, what we have to do is that we have to blitz through this... Uh, have to blitz through this cave, I guess, and do it very quickly. Well, the, the time limit of 20 minutes is... Come on, can I get up? Thank you very much. The time limit of 20 minutes is a bit lenient, but you don't have much time to dilly-dally around. So I'm just going to kill these suckers so that they don't start biting me in the ass, and I lose even more time because of that, which, of course, is, what, is what's going to, have to happen if I try to rush through things. So yeah, this, this one is by far the trickiest. The other seven are all on their little islands, uh, completely unblocked. So this one I like to do first because it's the longest one and also it's the closest one to the forest haven anyway. And um, by the way, random tidbit, the time limit doesn't uh, count down when you're in menus or using the Wind Waker or whatever. So if you if you got to take a piss break in the middle of it, don't worry, you can, uh, can have the menus show up or the map and you're going to be good. So 
We reached the first tree, so let's just dump that forest water on this thing. And suddenly it's going to look a lot more healthy very quickly. Tree number two is located on the private oasis on square E5, which is just south of the Tower of the Gods. So once again, let's repeat this process for this tree. And here we go, two down, six more to go. The third tree is located on square C5, Eastern Fairy Island, which is just north of the Tower of the Gods, which you can see all the way over there in the distance. The fourth tree is located on Shark Island, on square F3, which is just to the west of Southern Fairy Island. The fifth tree is on Needle Rock Isle, on square E1, just to the southwest of Great Fish Isle. Wow! Fail! How did I miss that? I have absolutely no idea. I was standing right next to it. Oh well, that's like three seconds wasted. Not a big deal. Tree number six is located on Great Fish Isle. This is... The part of the place with the spiral mountain-like island that uh, you may remember from our first visit here. Tree number seven is located on square B2, Mother and Child Isles, two squares north of Great Fish Isle. And the final tree is located on square A2, Star Island, which is just to the north of Mother and Child Isles. So this is the last tree. And once all the trees uh, are brought back to uh, proper health, once again, they grow all big and mighty like this. And the last one that uh, you... Uh, that you pour the water on will give you a piece of heart, which completes heart container number 15. And since the Forsaken Fortress is right next to Star Island, let's drop by, shall we? As you can see, the, the sun went down really, really fast. Uh, this is part of the, of the game, don't worry. It's just because, well, the events that are going to happen in this place wouldn't look nearly as ominous if they happened in broad daylight. So this is why uh, your, uh, your uh, night time is basically forced on this place. As you can see over there, we got the treasure chart for this place. We're just going to ignore the map fish because, as you might remember, we got uh, this square as a freebie at the beginning of the game. We also got Outset Island, Windfall Island, and uh, I think that was it, actually, in terms of freebies. So that's why we didn't talk to any of these three map fishes. So, um, this one, I believe it contains a silver rupee, probably, yes. So, uh, we just went past the, the entrance to, uh, the, the fortress itself. Uh, well, there's sort of an entrance gate that we didn't get through the first time through because we were catapulted inside the fortress's walls, courtesy of Tetra and her crew of pirates. So, you want to pull out your cannon and, uh, well, I got some help from the cannons that were, um, that were guarding the gate to begin with. I remember, I remember once that I didn't even need to fire a single cannonball in order to bring that gate down. Those cannons did it for me. So, join me in the next episode as we storm the Forsaken Fortress once again, and hopefully this time we're going to succeed in rescuing Arrow.